to understand docker images it's important to deep dive into the image layers so in this uh, video we are going to look into the layers and learn more about it so we created a docker file for our node.js application we give the base image as node lts alpine then we set the working directory followed by that we copied our application code we installed all the dependencies using npm install command we specified the port which we want to expose from the docker image and the entry point which is the container main process npm start each of this instruction that we specify in docker file creates an image layer let's look at it how so the first instruction was to get the base image that is your first layer which is fetched from the uh, docker repository or docker registry the next instruction was to create the working directory and set the current working directory that's your layer number 2 now this layer number 2 is connected with layer number 1 using the parent id that's how they reference from each other the third layer is to copy my application source code and that's how the second third layer is created the fourth layer where i do the npm install and the fifth layer is my entry point now the last layer where i have the entry point specified is the only read write layer or the other layers are read only layers right let's see this in action now on the to build the image i'm going to use docker build command since i am running it first time it will have all the uh, commands execute all the instructions executed it's installing the npm inside my container it'll take some time okay you see all the steps are executed you will notice that there is no caching right used here if i run this instruction again you'll notice that each of the step is specifying using cache using cache right we have seen this uh, before as well right now if i want to see these layers there is a command which says docker history specifies all the uh, instructions which are run one by one right so this is the first one where we had our base image after that we have working directory layer copy all the source code from my host machine to my docker container and i ran the npm install command followed by the expose and then entry point so we'll notice that each instruction has created a layer and the intermediate image ids are also available also one more a very in interesting fact that it shows us that how much size of my image increased during that uh, individual instruction so if you notice here the npm install where i downloaded all my npm li uh, node libraries is where the largest size added into the uh, container uh, size if i go and run docker images i have this final image which is hello world node js however this intermediate image that you see here are not shown however they are there in the cache but they are not available for you to use it to spin up containers and all that so if i go and make a change in my source code now let's do that let's say hello world here i rerun the docker build command you notice that after the source code copy from the source code copy there is no using cache further because the layers are built on top of each other so 
if any of the layer is changed, all the future layers have to be rebuilt. I can again do Docker images. It shows up my image here. And the previous image it marked as none, none because instead of deleting, it just decided to make it orphan. So I can see again Docker history, hello world node.js. I can see all these layers again. And if you want to see the this layer, which is working directory, D172.3c0, notice that this is exactly same, right? And all the further image layers have changed. Now, one question that comes in my mind is, how I can leverage these image layers, even though I have not changed my any of the dependencies, it is recreated the layer of npm install, right? Now that's where you have to be smart by writing your Docker file. So if I want to split my npm install from the actual source code, what I have to do? I have to go to my code in my Docker file. Instead of copying the full source code where my code has also changed, what I could do is that I could just copy my package star.json and then run the npm install command. After that, I copy all my source code. So with this approach of just copying the package JSON first, running the npm install, we'll see the uh, layers are used, right? So I'll read in, I'll just remove all my Docker images. Sorry. Okay, done. Got to know. I build my image. I I change my hello world to host my tag. This is the first time because I have cleared all my images. It will recreate everything. Done. Now I go and change my code. Hello world. I have not changed my dependencies. Remember that. I go ahead and rebuild my image. Now, if you notice, step number up to four, it is using cache, which means that my npm install was not rerun again when I build the image. And if you notice the time also, it took very less because it is not downloading any anything from the internet anymore. This is really good, right? Let's say let's see what happens when I change my package.json. So if I go to internet and find the npm express The latest version is 4.17.1. I go and make a change in my package.json to 4.17.1. Now, if I go and run the build command, you'll notice that only the work directory is using cache. After that, my package.json has changed and it will recreate all the layers again after that. Now it is very cool about Docker and it must be using some good intelligence on files, MD5 and everything to keep note about uh, what is these exact files that we copied and if there is a change then only 
recreate the layer for you. Now, if you notice the Docker images, I have size which is 138 MB, right? Because there is a change. Now, if I go into Docker history, you'll notice that this NPM install is 49 MB. Well, that must be wrong, right? I think 49 MB of library downloading is just too much, right? Okay, what's wrong there? Think about it. The wrong is, the, the part is that in the package.json, we have dependencies as well as dev dependencies. However, these dev dependencies are not required for production, right? So I should not be having inside my image. When I'm running locally, I need my uh, test runner and all that, that's fine. But for production image or any other further downstream image, I don't need it. So what I do is I should specify NPM install only for production. Now, this is very specific to NPM. Uh, however, just to showcase how you can look at the image size and optimize it further. So next step, I'm going to rebuild the image again. I'll run the, since my NPM install command is changed, I'll do instruction is changed. It is going to rerun that instruction from that instruction onwards. Now, if I go ahead and look at history, I will see that my NPM install is only 3.39 MB as compared to what I had here, just 49 MB. So this image history many times help you that why my image size is increasing and which instruction is adding lots of size to my image, right? So now if I look at my image Docker images, You'll notice that my image size is only 92 MB. And that's how you keep track of your image size. Now, why this image size is important, right? Since we have packaged everything together, we have to transfer this image everywhere. So if your image size increased, then you have you need a larger storage for your repository also, right? And since we recommend do frequent commits, Every commit might result into a new image. And if we keep increasing so many images, my repository volume will be very high. Also, when I have to transfer this image where I want to run on the v, uh, uh, as a container in my environment, I have to transfer this many uh, large megabytes to actual server, right? So always keep in mind that you have to use optimized image, which is having smaller in size and leverage the Docker history command more and more to uh, find out where I am adding the extra bytes into my image, right? Now to choose image. So I was explaining that when I go to the hub.docker and when I search for Node.js, there are many, many, many images available, right? Now, which one to pick is the question. There are many uh, version specific, which is very clear that which version Node, Node server, uh, Node I want to use, which is fine. But then each one had different options also available, right? So the one that I choose is Alpine because Alpine, so if I go ahead and search for Alpine, It is a Linux distribution base image, which is very small. It is of 5 MB size only. And that's what makes it really uh, popular in the uh, Docker world. So now let's understand this again with some visual, what we have achieved, right?
So now our new Docker file has a separation of package.json and your uh, actual source code, right? Now, when I create the image layers, creates the layers from node, uh, the base image is the first one, then the working directory set, then I copy package.json. So the layer only contains package.json file. After that, I run the npm install. So that's my another layer. After that, I run and copy my application source code. And now I have my entry point, which is my last layer. So this is how you can optimize your uh, Docker image layers for better reuse. Now exercise that we have, we use the Spring Boot application, right? In Spring Boot application, our base image is OpenJDK Alpine. So I have my Java with Alpine. Then I have my working directory. Then I copy my jar. And then I do Java minus jar, right? Well, that's, how I, that's how I build my image. However, this fat jar includes both the stuff, right? My application code as well as all my libraries. So what you could do is like, you could split your jar and classes copy as two separate space. And when you run, you run it in an old style rather than executable jar. You specify your class path as all your lib files, followed by your name of the application that you want to start, right? So the next exercise that you have to do is, that's how you can leverage the uh, layers. One more tip that I would give to optimize your Docker build time. To reduce the Docker build time, uh, just notice that when you do Docker build, there is something specific which is comes up as a first line in your Docker build, which is like sending build context to your Docker daemon. What is this build context? This build context is my current directory. So everything which is there in your current directory is packaged and sent to your Docker daemon. Now, in this case, my Docker daemon is my same running on the host machine. So file transfer is fast. However, many times if you're building Java application and all this context size could be in GB as well. If you have too much logs in your current directory because of your local runs, uh, tests, many things could add up, right? So you have to notice this context size while building the image. And you have to reduce this as much as possible, right? Now, in my current directory, I have too many things. If you look at my current directory, my I have all the code as well as I have node modules, which is which I did npm install on my local machine. That's why it showed up here. So now if I go and check the size of my npm modules, it's going to be in MBs, right? We have seen that it's around 40 MB. And that's the main crux behind uh, the uh, context size, right? Now, how to reduce this? So there is a provision in Docker where you can add a file, Docker ignore, similar to the git ignore, exactly in the same uh, way Docker ignore works. So what I have to do here is that I have to add node modules in my list here that I want to ignore this file in my context. Remember that this is just used for context. So now with this Docker file, if I go and run, notice my context has gone to 310 KB from 44 MB. Now if I remove this, you will notice that it has increased to 44 MB again, right? Add this, rerun, see, just 310 KB. So many times 
if your docker build is taking too long to just start check this context size and optimize using docker ignore file now as the next exercise exercise number 3 what you have to do is like you have to optimize your spring boot build image docker file so do not use the executable fat jar separate libs and application code and also add docker ignore to reduce the context load 